Welcome to Studio 21. For the next uh, minutes, we'll be visiting with the mayor of Tulsa, Oklahoma, Dewey Bartlett Jr. Thank you for joining us. Oh, you're welcome, Warren. And this is an early morning to do the interview, and I know your schedule's kind of busy. So I I'd like to ask you initially, I mean, you're a third generation in the oil business. Mm -hmm. uh, your, your father had one of the most famous names in Oklahoma politics. What would you be doing if, if you didn't have that legacy there? What kind of work would you be doing? Well, I'd, I'd be in the oil business, uh, and I'd be uh, totally uh, committed to it, uh, other than my family, of course, but uh, uh, that's, what I, that's what I do. That's what I really know very well, and I really, really love the industry. I mean, it's a terrific industry. It has a good history. Uh, it's, it's in Oklahoma's DNA, and it's, and it's full of just the finest people in the world, greatest now, people I've ever met. You're a young 62 years of age, and you started in the oil business early. What kind of jobs did you have? Well, I started out in oil fields. Uh, my father, uh, he always gave me a lot of advice, and fortunately, I listened to a little bit of it. <laughs> and the one thing he did say, he said, whatever you do, do in your, in your future, uh, start out out in the field, what he called the field. But go out, in other words, where things are done, where the work is done. So I started working uh, for a company called Halliburton uh, back in my early 30s and uh, worked uh, on a f uh, crew that dealt with uh, working out around oil rigs and uh, pumping cement. I drove a truck, a pump truck, a, a bulk cement plant uh, truck, did all sorts of things out in the field around wells, did that for a couple of years. Then I worked for a subsidiary company of Halliburton and uh, with uh, gas compression equipment, gas processing plants. The purpose of all that is to learn what is done out in the field, because that's where all the money's made and lost. But also, I got to learn, and, and, he, and this is his advice, he said, you need to learn the vernacular. You need to learn about the people that are doing this kind of work for you. Because if, they, if, if you don't get along with them, and if you don't know how to communicate with them, uh, then you really miss the boat. And, uh, and he was as right as he could be. Now, he gave you advice about the oil business. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you were a teenager. I think he was a state senator. I think you were uh -huh. in your early 20s when he, he became governor, mm -hmm. Dewey Bartlett Sr. Mm -hmm. uh, what kind of political advice did he give you? Well, a lot of it was uh, by example. Uh, he was a Republican, but at that time when he was elected uh, as governor, there were only about 20, 25 uh, percent registered Republicans in the state of Oklahoma. And he was always aware, very, very aware, that it took a whole lot of Democrats to elect him to office, to give him the opportunity to represent the state as governor and U.S. senator. And that has never been lost on me. Uh, even though I'm a Republican, I do know that there's a lot of other people in this world besides Republicans. And we all have to get along. Uh, in my campaign that I had for mayor, uh, one of my mottos was that this is one Tulsa, and that's how I'm going to govern this city, because we are one Tulsa. We're all in it together. Uh, we don't want to be divisive. Uh, try to get along with everybody. Try to make a consensus. Try to make things work better together as one. I heard an inter interesting story that you were in Washington, D.C., and there was kind of a legacy from your father there. Uh, the Vice President uh, uh, Biden made a comment saying, are, are you his son? Yeah, that uh, took me by surprise as well. I, I was on a phone call with him, and he, I introduced myself to him over the phone, and, and he asked if I was Dewey Bartlett's son. And I said, well, yes. And he said that how he had served with my father uh, in the United States Senate, and he said uh, something very, very nice. He said, if there was a top 10 list for all the people that I knew that served in, the, in and around the United States Senate, your dad would be top of that list. And they apparently had become very, very, very close friends. And he told me repeatedly, he said, I'm not kidding you. I'm not just saying this to be nice to you. I'm telling you because your dad was the real deal. And he was a good man. And next time you're in Washington, I want to visit with you, tell you more about him. So I'm going to take him up on that. How do you think the, the, uh, the challenge of building consensus is different from when your father served in the Senate, when he uh, served as governor, and, and today, in terms of just getting us all together as people? You know, it's, it, it is different, I think, because the media is totally different. Uh, back then, there was no internet as we know it today. Cell phones uh, really weren't, weren't uh, uh, used at that point. Uh, the, the immediacy of news uh, didn't happen. So people didn't have the time to reflect on events. And now, as soon as something happens, there's a microphone in, in, your, in, in somebody's face saying, what do you think about that? And so the, they have an immediate reaction, sometimes very emotional. And so there's not a time to think about what I just experienced. 
And I think that's a real difference in, 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 in how politics is approached now, the immediacy of the event. And people have a tendency to have an emotional response, uh, I think. Uh, and instead of taking a little time to reflect and try to decide, well, maybe this, maybe what I heard really wasn't quite as bad as I'm taking it right now, and then, you know, that sort of thing. So I think that today that uh, if we all did just purposely put ourselves back a little bit and try not to have an immediate reaction and just ask to be, to think about it for a bit before we react, that might make it a little more statesmanlike in how we approach things. Uh, you, you've, your career in politics is not, it, it's been a winding road. Uh, and sometimes in life we learn a lot by, by setbacks. Mm -hmm. uh, you had a few elections you lost. What did you learn? Well, it's, uh, it's no fun to lose uh, in anything. But uh, politics, uh, of course, running for office, it's a very uh, upfront, wide open event where everybody gets to see you win, everybody gets to see you lose, and then everybody gets to second guess you. And uh, so it's, it, it's, it's difficult, it really is, to, to lose campaigns. But it does, uh, I talked to a very good friend of mine after I lost, she said, oh, well, just pick yourself up, dust off your suit, there'll be another day. And there always is another day uh, in, in life. Uh, but certainly in politics, obviously, there was for me. And uh, an opportunity presented itself to run for mayor, and here we are. Now, you, you were a, a, a council member mm -hmm. at, at one time. Mm -hmm. uh, in because of that and because of your history in Tulsa, y you, you know a lot about how things are, are working or should work. Uh, any surprises when you, you went to that office on the 15th floor down the street? Quite a few uh, surprises. It, it had different, uh, I, I'm sorry, it, it had a different feel to it uh, when I was on the council initially. This was 20 years ago, things had just started. Uh, we, we had the, the, the feeling that whatever was good for the city of Tulsa was eventually good for our districts. And I think that's, that attitude has somewhat changed. Uh, there's more of a uh, what's good for my district attitude or what's good for me kind of, kind of feeling, which is unfortunate. Um, the uh, council, when I was uh, involved with it, uh, the, the mayor that was in charge, Roger Randall, then Susan Savage, we really deferred uh, to the mayor because we, we understood very well that the mayor really is in charge of the city of Tulsa and that we were there to uh, hopefully give, give, give good support, but give constructive criticism if necessary. But we were the legislative body. We approved budgets, but uh, we as a group didn't get real aggressive. And it could have been just that was just how we as a group were. Things are a little different uh, this time. I think the last decade or so, the council's become a lot more aggressive, uh, reaching into uh, powers that they, in my opinion, uh, don't have. And uh, so that's probably somewhat, somewhat of the conflict that we have. I've said, no, I don't think that's where you should be. Well, you, you also are, in, in terms of your job, uh, wh when the election was happening, some of us thought, you gotta be crazy to be, to wanna be mayor of Tulsa, Oklahoma with the economic times and some mm -hmm. of the challenges that the, the, the city is facing. Are, are you crazy? <laughs> <laughs> Some people probably think I am. My family probably wonders occasionally. Uh, no, I'm not. And, and the reason I ran and the reason I'm, I'm glad I'm mayor is that I bring a business experience to, to this job. And I think that's very, very important in elected office. We really must have people that have a lot of, of experience in a business community, that have come up through the business community uh, to make a commitment to do something for the community. And having that experience is, it, it's why I'm there. It's, it's really why I enjoy being mayor because having that business experience is different than, than uh, many others that have uh, preceded me. Well, how do you tap that business energy? Because we know there's not, not a lot of budget money out there. How do you tap that biz business energy to make things happen? Well, I ask a lot of questions. I look for different ways of doing things. I don't look for, uh, well, let's just uh, add it on another tax as a way to get out of the mess. I look at the management. There's always better ways to manage a situation than there is to simply add more money to it. And that to me is the, is, is the, 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 the real advantage of a person that's involved in the business community that's, that's, that's run their own business. If they're, if they're using their own money, they're very, very interested in how that money is managed and used and spent. And it's uh, usually from the point of view of wanting to spend that money to the best advantage of the company. And in my case, I want to see how our money is, is being spent to the best advantage for the city of Tulsa, for the citizens, for the taxpayers. Now, you're the public face, really, for, for, for Tulsa. Mm -hmm. But the, to, to make things work, there's got to be a team behind there. What are your team members? The former Speaker of the House in, in Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, could you comment on, on your team and their strengths? We have a great group of people. Uh, former Speaker uh, Chris Bench is a great example. I mean, who better to have, uh, have on the team but a gentleman such as Chris Bench? And he, uh, he has uh, c contacts with everybody in Oklahoma and, and in neighboring states, uh, certainly in, in the political uh, uh, perspective as well. But he also has strong interest in energy, which is a real uh, strong component of what I see as our saving uh, opportunity is in the energy field. That's a real, real strength of his. Uh, he also has good, good contacts in Washington, D.C. Uh, Jim Twombly, <coughs> he's our uh, uh, former city manager of the city of Broken Arrow for 10, 15 years. Uh, uh, I think about uh, a little less than 10 years, I'm sorry, but he's also the city manager of uh, a town in Iowa for about 10 years. He was the assistant city manager in Oklahoma City for quite a while. So he brings management experience from a city manager perspective. Uh, that's, that's very, very strong. Terry Simonson, my chief of staff, he's been chief of staff in several previous mayors and uh, he's a real student of government, how government works. Uh, he's a true visionary in how to make government work better for the people. Uh, Lloyd Wright, my press secretary, a very dear friend uh, from many, many years ago, 20 plus uh, years of experience in uh, uh, journalism in the press, but especially in the, in the television media. Uh, a lot of experience there. We really have a terrific, terrific group of people. Mike Bunny, gentleman that's uh, the head of my economic development team, 30 plus years in very, very top management of Boeing aircraft. Aerospace is a, another strong component of our economy. He brings great experience in that. That's just an example. We have several people throughout our administration with that type of experience and that type of capability. Uh, I'm very proud of them. The qualities that uh, translate to a successful uh, leader, when your dad was in office mm -hmm. and now when you're in office, are they different? No, I don't think they are really that much. Uh, there's probably different emphasis on, on, on aspects of it. Uh, 